Today, what I'm going to be working on is part of an ongoing experiment on one of the properties I help maintain here in upstate New York. As I'm sure anyone who watches this channel knows, the emerald ash borer is decimating the native ash populations across North America. We're conducting an experiment to see if coppicing and pollarding could be effective methods to reduce the damage done by the borers on individual trees. Generally speaking, coppicing is when you cut a tree at ground level to promote sprouting from the base or roots, and pollarding is when a tree is cut at a height that promotes new growth above the level of animal brows. This tree line along the stone wall is where we're going to continue pollarding this year. And this is the area that we coppiced and pollarded last year. Please note that the customer wanted as many trees coppiced and pollarded as possible in the window of time that we had, and specifically said to hold off on cleanup, which is why this looks like such a mess. The idea behind this experiment is that by continually cutting back the ash trees, we're promoting regular, small, but vigorous new growth that is perhaps less attractive to the borer, while also reducing the amount of the tree that has thick bark. In my experience, at least, the S-shaped borer tunnels are usually found behind the thick bark on the trunk of the tree and rarely on the thinner limb wood. For this reason, I think coppicing would likely be a more effective method at outsmarting the ash borer than pollarding, as it basically eliminates the favorable thick bark on the tree. However, around here, it's almost impossible to practice successful coppicing without major investments in deer and rabbit protection. We're not unreasonably optimistic about how well this experiment will work out, but these trees are going to die soon anyway, so I don't see any harm in trying. So there's the first one done. Definitely wasn't the prettiest cut in the world. You could see how high I came on that back cut. That's why I brought that little DeWalt saw, because not only is it dangerous, but it's really unwieldy working with the saw that big over your head. So whatever, let's clean it up. All right, I backed up my trailer to clean up that tree and instantly got stuck in the mud. So I'm going to try to pull myself out with the rope puller. I got it rigged up there in that apple tree. Let's see how this works. I spun it off that tree in the stone wall a little bit. It worked. So now I'll just back up the gator, turn it around, and maybe get some work done today.
All right, it's a couple days later. I had to call it quits the other day because I got sawdust in my eye. Uh, my trailer got stuck. I broke my tripod and I started pouring raining. So I'm gonna do those two next. All right, so I made my cut on that one, and I even wedged it, but it's caught up in that other ash tree, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that one down, hopefully it'll free that. That one's not really a good candidate for pilarding, so I'm probably gonna make my cut a little higher than that stone wall, that way I could swing my ax and put a wedge in there, and then I'll cut it down to the base afterwards. <laughs> Perfect.
this one's already totally dead, so I'm just gonna take it down. This is a really great cluster right here. So here's a look at what we got done today. In total, we pilarded 17 and coppice 3. I'll soon do a video on the cleanup of this as well as last year's mess, and I'll show how poorly the coppice trees are doing due to a lack of deer and rabbit protection. When I come back for cleanup, I'll put some welded wire cages around the ones that are coppice to protect them, and I'll continue to monitor these trees throughout the year.